This is Nick with logosbynick.com, and in this tutorial, I'll be demonstrating how you can use Inkscape for desktop publishing purposes to create things like reports, manuals, ebooks, and various other types of PDF documents. Now, granted, Inkscape probably isn't the best tool for this sort of thing, but if you just need to create a simple one or two page document, or maybe even a short ebook, and you're already somewhat familiar with Inkscape, then it would probably be more practical than taking the time to learn an entirely new piece of software like Scribus or InDesign. I've used Inkscape myself to create manuals and ebooks in the past, so I know that it's perfectly capable in that regard. Before we get started, though, if you'd like to learn everything that there is to know about Inkscape, be sure to check out my Inkscape Masterclass. It's a collection of over 60 videos where I go over every tool and feature in Inkscape, and I explain what it is and demonstrate how it works. I'll have a link in the description of the video if you want to check that out. So to get us started here in Inkscape, I'm just going to open up a new document and then set up the documents so that we are all working with a similar workflow. Come up here to where it says View, make sure we have Custom selected, and then come up to Zoom and go to Zoom in at one-to-one. -one. And then we'll open up the Align and Distribute menu with this button right here, and then open up the Fill and Stroke menu with this button right here. And over here where it says Snapping, we want to make sure we have Enable Snapping enabled. And we want this one enabled right here that says snap nodes, pads, and handles. We also want this one enabled that says snap to cusp nodes, including rectangle corners. And the one next to it as well, snap to smooth nodes, we're going to enable that. And then over here where it says snap text anchors and baselines, enable that. And then finally over here where it says snap to the page border, enable that as well. And also you're going to want to make sure you have snap guides enabled as well, but that should be enabled by default. But if it's not, go ahead and enable that. So what I want to do now is set up the canvas so that it's suitable for creating these PDF documents we're going to create. So we'll come over here to where it says File, click on Document Properties, and then where it says Display Units, I want to change that to Inches. And over here where it says Page Size, we have a list of templates here. I'm going to choose US Letter, which is 8.5 by 11 inches. If you want to create something like an A5 or an A1 or maybe even US Legal, you can use that if you want. For this tutorial, I'm just going to do the standard 8.5 by 11 inches. Over here where it says border, we want to leave show page border enabled. Border on top of drawing, we're going to enable that. That should be helpful when we're creating our design. And then show border shadow, let's just disable that. And then finally over here where it says background color, I'm going to change this. I'm going to click on the HSL tab and I'm going to come down here to the L row and slide this to the left a little bit. And if you notice, the canvas is becoming darker as I do that. And we want the canvas to be slightly darker than white because white is going to be the color of the page we create here. So let me close out of that. We should be all set now, close out of that. What I want to do now is create a rectangle to place in this page border here. It's going to represent the white page of the document. So I'll grab the squares and rectangles tool and I'll snap to the top left corner of the page, click and drag, and then snap to the bottom right corner of the page to create this rectangle there. And I want to make this rectangle white. Make sure your opacity is all the way up at 100% and make sure you don't have an outline around your object, otherwise known as a stroke. If you do have a stroke added to your object, just hold shift and click this red X down here to get rid of it. And then finally up here where it says make corners, make corners sharp, we wanna make sure we have sharp corners while we're doing this. So if this is not grayed out, go ahead and click on that. We don't want our page to have rounded corners. Okay, so now that we have our page set, we need to define the content area of this page. We don't want the content to run all the way to the edges here. So we want to create one inch of padding going around the document here. So to do that, let me grab this select tool. Let me right click on this, um, doc, this uh, rectangle here and go to duplicate. And I'm just going to make this red so we can differentiate it. This is just temporarily. And up here where it says width and height or W and H, we're going to remove an inch from each dimension. So it's going to be 7.5 by 11. Before we do this though, make sure you don't have this lock icon enabled. Make sure it's disabled like I have it here. So I'm going to change this to 7.5. I'm going to hit tab to skip over to the height and change that to 10 and then press enter. And it should now be an inch smaller. Now what we have to do is center this up on the page. So where it says relative to, change this to page over here in the align and distribute menu. And we're looking for center on vertical axis and center on horizontal axis. And this right here is going to define where the contents of the page are. We don't want to leave this red object sitting here though, so we're going to convert this to guides. Come up here to where it says object and go to convert objects to guides. And now we have guides there to reference as we're creating our design. So the first thing we're going to do to create the design that I showed you in the beginning of the video is we're going to create some header text or title text up here. Let me grab the uh, text tool 
Let me click and drag. Actually, I'm going to snap to the corner of these of these uh, guides over here and then just click and drag to create a title area. I'm just going to title this monthly report. And I'm just going to change this, make this bold. Maybe make this a smaller size, go with something like 20. And if you want to change the font, you can do so over here. I'm just going to leave the default sans font for now. Leave that. Now I want to put a page number over here. So let me just duplicate this text object. I'll right click it and go to duplicate. And I'll change this. Let me grab the text tool, change this to 0, 1, because this will be page 1. And let me, uh, let me make this a little smaller. First of all, I want to remove the bold. I'm going to make this normal. And then I'll just make this maybe something like 16. That looks pretty good. And now we can just place this in the top right corner over here. I'm going to zoom in on this. To zoom in, I'm just holding control and rolling up the mouse wheel. To move the page, just press down the mouse wheel and move the mouse. I just want to manually place this in the corner here. Unfortunately, these text objects will not snap into your guides unless it's the base of the text object like you see here. But that's not what we're looking for. So we're going to leave that right there as it is. Let me zoom back out. And now I just want to create like a little divider to put right here. So I'm going to grab the rectangle tool again. Click and drag to create like a little rectangle going from one side to the other. That's looking pretty good. I'll make this something like yellow. Grab the select tool, move this up like that. Let me zoom in so I can get a little closer. There we go, that's what I'm looking for. And I wanna make a copy of this divider and put it at the bottom of the page too. So let me right click this and go to duplicate. And I will put this divider at the bottom of the page where the bottom of the margin is. And now I wanna create some content area for our design here. What I'm gonna do for this particular design, I'm gonna create two columns of text if you want, you could just use one giant block of text. I'm going to put a little more design into this. So I'm going to use two columns of text here. So let me grab the rectangle tool again. Let me create another rectangle going through the, uh, through the uh, guidelines here. And let me just make this red. Let me bring down the opacity. And I want to divide this up into two separate evenly sized and evenly spaced apart rectangles. So to do that, I'm just going to create another rectangle going through the center here like this. And I'm going to center that up on the page. Grab the Select tool, hold Shift, click on the object there, and go to Path, Difference. So that those are now two different objects. And I'm just going to zoom in. I'm going to hold Control, roll with the mouse wheel to zoom in a little bit. I'm just going to position this down here a little further. We don't, want this, we don't want this flush against the guide here because the text is going to be in this red area. We don't want the text to be stacked on top of this divider. So a little bit of padding in there should help. Something like that looks pretty good. And I don't want these text columns to be this high, so I'm just going to take this top arrow and just bring this down. I'm going to leave these two text columns right here. And then I'm going to put some other contents up here, which we will go over momentarily. So let me zoom in. Let's break this apart into two separate objects. We'll go to Path, Break Apart. And now we'll go to Objects, Object to Guides. And we now just created guides that we can reference to, for placing our text. So let's go ahead and place some placeholder text in here. Uh, I'm just going to copy and paste some um, lorem ipsum dummy text. And uh, let me grab the text tool over here. Click and drag this corner down to here like that. And I'm just going to hit Control V to paste my text in there. Now this is a little too big. Let me, let me select all of this. Control A to select all. I want to bring the size down to like maybe 12. I'm just going to go ahead and add some more text in here now. Let me just copy and paste more of this lorem ipsum text. Now, if you notice, if, you, if your text is too long, it's going to run to the end of the page here. So let me take this little node and just drag this down. And as you can see, the text is running through the edge here. So if, if your text is bleeding out to the edge, just go ahead and select it and delete it and you'll have to continue it on in this column over here. This is one of the reasons why I think Inkscape probably isn't the best tool for this sort of thing, because you gotta do a lot of manual uh, copy and pasting with the text. Uh, if you want, if you notice the text here, we have this spacing on the right side. If you wanna make it so that the text runs to the, to the edges of both sides, uh, what you can do is you can come up to the uh, justification up here, the alignment rather, and then change, to, change it to this option right here. And if you notice, it spaces the text out so it runs to the edges like that. I don't like how that looks personally. It looks too like robotic. So I'm just going to leave it as it was before. And then we're going to do the same thing over here. Create some more text. I'm just going to make this box even bigger this time so I don't have to change the size of it. And again, we're just going to, uh, I'm just going to control paste, use this dummy text here. Let me select all, control A to select all, change the size of this to match the size of the other text. I'm going to use 12. 
And for this one, I'm going to maybe shorten this by about this much because for this design, I'm going to uh, use uh, like a placeholder graphic over here, like a chart or some kind of pie chart or something like that. We'll go back to the select tool. Okay, so now that part is done. What we could do now is create like a text area in here, like a, like a header section. To do that, I'm going to grab the white rectangle that represents the page. I'm going to right click that and go to duplicate. And I'm just going to take this bottom arrow and scale it up like this, bring it up to about there. Let me change the color of this so we can see what we're doing here. I'm going to make this like a dark shade of blue like that. You can use whatever color you'd like. I'll take this top arrow, bring this down. And we're going to use this area right here to add some like a uh, leader text or header text. And before I do that though, I just want to make sure that this is evenly spaced out between this text object, this blue rectangle, and this yellow divider. I want to make sure all three of these are evenly spaced out. So I'm going to click on the divider, hold shift, click on the, the blue box, hold shift, click on the text, and come over here to where it says distribute. And we're looking for this icon down here towards the bottom right that says make vertical gaps between objects equal. Go ahead and click on that. And there we go. So let me uh, create some text to put in here. I'm going to grab the text tool, snap to the uh, left guide right here, put that right there. I'm just going to use header text. I'm going to make that white. And maybe I'll make that a little bigger. Maybe something like 30, uh, 32. That should be pretty good. And now I want to use this divider. For this design, I'm going to use this divider down here as well. So let me take that divider, duplicate that by uh, right-clicking it and going to duplicate. Put this over here. And I want this divider to be the same width of this text. So let me click on the text, right-click it and go to copy, and then click on the divider and go to edit, paste size, paste width. And then I can go ahead and paste this, or move this over here like that. I'm going to zoom in so that the snaps won't get in the way. There we go. And now I'm going to put some subtext down here. So let me click on this, right click it, duplicate, put this down here, make this white, grab the text tool again, and uh, subtext can go here. Let me just stack this next to it like that. Now it's looking pretty good. Let me zoom in to make sure these are evenly spaced apart. Looking pretty good. Now I'm going to put some text in here on this right side. To do that, let me grab the text tool. I'm going to start over here on this guideline. Click and drag like this. Let me try that again. I'm going to click and drag to create this text box. Control V to paste. There we go. Make that white. Uh, Control A to select it all. I'm going to make this one slightly bigger than this body text over here. So this was sized at 12. I'm going to size this at maybe uh, 16. See how that looks. That looks pretty good. Now I'm going to go ahead and remove some of this so that we don't have so much of that in there. Okay, looking pretty good. Now if you're not happy with the width of this text, what you can do is, let me zoom in a little bit. You can move this over like this. And then you can go back to the text tool and take this node right here and just snap it to the right side so that it changes the, uh, the orientation of it like that. Now let me grab the select tool. I want to center this text up within this blue object. So I'm going to hold shift and click on the blue text, I mean the blue object. And I'm going to change the relative to, I'm going to change that to last selected. And I'm going to center it up on the horizontal axis like that. And now I want this text to, to be aligned to the top of this text. So let me click and drag over those three objects right there to select them. Or what you could do is you could just click them one by one while holding shift. And then just group them together with this button that says Group Selected Objects. Or you can just press Control G. Hold Shift, click on this text right here, and then just where it says uh, Align Top Edges, click on that. And that right there is what we're looking for. So let me zoom out a little bit. Let me click off of this to deselect everything. Now what you could do now is you can import an image in here if you want to do what I did. If you want to add some more flair to this design, what I'm going to do is I'm going to import my image over here. I have it opened up on my other monitor if I can just find it. Um, there we go. I'll bring my folder. This is the folder right here. I'll bring it into the screen. If you just take your image and just click and drag it onto Inkscape like that, leave the defaults as it is, click OK, and there's my image. I just want to send this to the bottom of the image. I'm going to right click this. Actually, no, I'm going to come over here to where it says lower selection to the bottom. Click on that. And then I want to raise that one step so it's above the white page. So I'm going to click this button over here that says Raise Selection One Step. 
And if at any point you want to see how your design is looking without these guides in the way, you could just come over here to where it says view and then deselect guides. What I like to do is use the keyboard shortcut, which is this uh, vertical line right here. So I'm going to toggle them off and on to see how they look. Okay, so let me center this up on the blue box right here. Let me select that, hold shift, click on the blue box, center it up vertically and horizontally like that. Click off of it to deselect everything. Take just this blue box and bring the opacity down a little bit so that the image shows beneath it. Then I want to take this image, hold control and shift and scale it down like that. That's pretty good. Let me zoom in, move this up. Okay, so now I just want to crop this image so that it fits this blue square right here. So let me take the blue square, right click it, and go to duplicate, hold shift, click on the image and go to object, clip, object, clip, set. And there we go. Now let me take this and just adjust the opacity so that some of it shows through. That right there looks pretty good. Now let me zoom out. I'm going to come over here now to where it says view. Let me toggle off the guide so we can see how it looks. And as you can see, our design is looking pretty good. Now you can use this area here to import like an infographic or a pie chart or something like I did. I'm just going to leave it blank for now. Uh, as it stands, this design is looking like it's finished. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to save it as a PDF document. I'll go to File, Save As. I'm just going to title this thing Report. And for the file, save, save as type, I'm going to change that to PDF right there. There we go. And I'll go ahead and save. Leave the defaults as they are. Go ahead and click OK. OK, now the downside of one of the other downsides of doing this with Inkscape is that you'll have to design your report or your book one page at a time and then save all of the individual pages as individual PDFs and then use something like PDF SAM to merge the PDF document together. I'll show you that in just a minute. Again, this is one of the downsides of using Inkscape. That's why I recommend if you're creating something really long, like a 50 or 60 page book, probably not a good idea to use Inkscape. But if you just want to create a one or two page report like this, that's fine. So uh, let me, um, let me uh, minimize this now and come back over here to my folder. I'm looking for report.pdf. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to save a second copy of this file, save as. I'm going to save a second, a second copy of this just so I can demonstrate how this works. Uh, report to PDF. Click Save. So now what I've done here is I opened up a piece of software known as PDF SAM. This is a free piece of software. I'll have a link in the description if you want to download it. This just allows you to merge PDF documents together pretty quickly. If you want, you can use a web-based solution if you'd like. You don't have to download software to do this. Come over here to where it says Merge. And I'm just going to take these two documents and place them in here like this. And it's going to ask you where you want to place this. I'm going to place it where it originally was. And I'm going to leave everything as it is and click Run. And there we go. So let me open up this document. And as you can see here, we have a two-page PDF document that we created with Inkscape. And you can take this text and highlight it and copy and paste it just like you would with any other PDF document. And the great thing about this, again, is since we created this in Inkscape, this is a vector design, meaning you could zoom in on this and you won't get that pixelization. You get that the benefit of working with vectors like that. So uh, I think that should do it for this tutorial. That's how you can go about using Inkscape for some pretty rudimentary desktop publishing purposes. If you have any questions, just leave a comment below. And as always, thanks for watching.